Hi, everybody. Welcome to our 2020 Umpty Ump graduation ceremony. Normally, we'd get together for a big night of celebration right after your last exam. Students' brains are a little fried, and instructors still have to spend the rest of the night grading the exam after the ceremony, so we try and keep everything light and fun. This is not the graduation we were expecting to have or wanted to have. Some of you know I have a son who's a high school senior this year, so believe me, I know this is not what any of us expected at the end of the year. But we're glad we can find a way to honor everything that you've done, even if it's virtually. And there's a bonus. Because we're online, we can include all of our students in Duluth and Rochester together with the Calc 3 class from the Twin Cities. So welcome to everybody from across the state, wherever you're watching this. And let's be clear, finishing Umpty Ump is a huge accomplishment and worth celebrating. For a little bit of context, I took a look at enrollments. In the Twin Cities five years ago, we began with 135 students in algebra. And now at the end of Calc 3, we're down to 82, about 60% of where we started. And that's actually extremely good. Internally, knowing that students' interests change, especially in middle school and high school, families move, Umpty Ump is a lot of work and so on. We aim to keep our retention rates above 80% from year to year. Your class actually averaged 88% retention from year to year, which is fantastic. It's, it's close to a record within Umpty Ump. But you're also all good mathematicians, so you know if you raise 0.88 to the fourth power, well, pretty quickly you get down into that 50 or 60% range, and a lot of people that you started with have not finished. So finishing Umpty Ump is one of the biggest accomplishments of your life, one that you've worked on for a really long time. Wherever you are and whoever you're watching this with, give yourself a round of applause, pat on your back, and celebrate this moment. I love my job because of the students I get to teach and the people I work with. The staff and instructors that I work with are incredibly dedicated and talented. They make my life easier every single day. We have a lot of people who want to wish you well, and because we have instructors from all three sites, you might see a few people that you don't know from class, but aside from a few inside jokes here and there, what they say will apply to you too. So I'm going to hand this video off to them for a little bit, and then we'll continue on with our student speakers. Hello everyone, I'm Duck Washington. I'm Katie Williams. And I'm Scott Gilbert. And we're the staff that's been supporting you from the Umpty Up office and for the last couple of months from our homes. Uh, it's an honor to have you uh, be a part of the program the last few years and we're really, really proud to see you graduate today. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'd like to start by saying congratulations. Uh, I got to know each of you in algebra uh, and then again in Calc 2 and I was able to see how much you changed in just those three short years. Uh, if you continue changing and growing that much in the next three years, you guys are gonna go uh, very far. Uh, one thing I probably should have told you four years ago is that I really don't like fun dip. So uh, again, congratulations. Uh, and it was awesome to get to know all of you and have you in class. Hey, everybody. Uh, we had a lot of punches to roll with during Calc 3 this year, of course, but y'all crushed it anyway. Thanks for being rad. Uh, drive safe, be good, and remember to be a person. And I have to say, when I came to Duluth, I knew right away I needed to bring Umpty up with me as it would be an amazing opportunity for students. And certainly, you have bared that out. I can't tell you how much of a joy and a delight and how much fun it's been to have you as students as well as to watch you go through your mathematical journey. Um, I am reminded every day uh, in teaching you and knowing you why I chose this profession to teach. It's because of you, it's because of your success and you give me energy and you keep me young. So to Max, Finn, Kale, Ashley, Aaron, Carl, Alex, Eli, Lucas, Nick, congratulations and hopefully you'll be uh, keeping in touch with us and letting, know what, letting us know what you're doing. Congratulations to all. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hello from the Rochester site. I'm Professor Jared Bright. To all Calculus Three graduates, congratulations on completing the program. I hope each of you experienced joy and curiosity, wonder and amazement, and challenge and perseverance in your journey through Umpty Ump. While you learn many mathematical concepts, I encourage you to consider the numerous other skills you learned along the way. Working with others, experiencing college level expectations early in your academic career, 
reading and communi communicating formal mathematics, and perhaps most importantly, problem solving in ambiguous contexts. I hope you leverage the skills learned in UMTM to further our collective understanding in your field of interest. Now a message just for the Rochester students. You all developed incredibly strong bonds with each other and worked together better than I could have ever hoped for. I hope you do your best to maintain those relationships you formed in UMTM. Who knows when you may need to consult a previous colleague. Congratulations to all, and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Hi, I'm Dr. Johnson. I taught Calc 3 this semester. Hi, I'm Dr. Yadavali, and I was an instructor for Calc 3 this year. Hi, I'm Dr. McCormick, and I taught Calc 3 in the fall. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Hank, and I was a workshop instructor for you all for the last two years. Congratulations! Congratulations! <laughs> Congrats, everyone. You have finished Umpty Ump. We have really enjoyed having you in class all of these years. We wish you the best. We know you will always be doing awesome things in the future. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Matsky. Um, I was a workshop leader for Calc 2 last year, and I was a workshop leader for Calc 3 this year. Um, it was an absolute, absolute pleasure getting to work with so many of you, and it was fun both getting the opportunity to teach you and also just to get to know you, get to see you mathematically, um, and I truly believe that there's nothing that you all can't do um, when you put your minds to it and put in the work. Have fun along the way, and congratulations. The graduating class. Woo! Hi everyone, my name is Studio Aurora. When Dr. Rognes asked me to speak at graduation, I initially hesitated because how do you put in words a roller coaster ride? You just come out of it scared, blushed, thrilled, and breathless and just say, wow, I can't believe I did that. Let me try it again. And I guess that is what I would say about UMTM, just taking out the let me try it again part. I'm good with only doing it once. I remember the first day of orientation where Dr. Rognes talked about hitting walls, how he ran into one and how his friend cruised along until grad school. And I vividly remember telling myself as a young, innocent, incoming Algebra 1 student thinking, I think I'm gonna be like his friend. I know math, I like math, I'm pretty good at math, and I wanna do math. My wall can come later. And boy, was I wrong. On my very first day of UMTM, I hit a wall. Literally, I physically hit a wall trying to hold too many things and walked straight into one in Bleggen Hall. Of course, that's not the wall that Dr. Rogas was talking about. That was just me being clumsy. Academically, Algebra 1 and 2 were smooth sailing. Geometry had a slight rough patch, but I recovered, and it ended up being just another slight turn of the roller coaster and pre-calc ended up being a breeze. Then came calculus one. The feeling was the same when you slowly make your way to the top of the roller coaster and suddenly it plunges. The only difference is that this plunge would not end. Every week, every lesson, every workshop, Moodle post, email to professors, review session, homework, I worked hard, but I couldn't catch my breath or my grade. I thought that Umtiam, Newton, Euler, Leibniz had to be conspiring to torture this generation of students with math. And towards the end of the year, I felt that I didn't know math, I did not like math, and I was for sure not good at math. Maybe Calc 1 is where my math limit was just going undefined. But there was also something that year, something that accompanied each plunge and each twist, a thrill a determination, and a desire to hold on tight and not fall off. And that feeling did not let me quit. So I hesitantly started Calc 2, and the coaster turned again at this point. I loved the break from limits, derivatives, integrals, series, and sequences, and dived into logic and set theory. And I was back to, I know math, I like math, and I'm quite good at math. That fall semester renewed my confidence within myself because even though the problems were challenging, 
I still felt like I could ask for help from professors, friends, classmates, and be able to successfully find the solution. I also learned how to keep myself calm and focused when my efforts to solve a problem seemed to fail. I learned how to try and try again without getting disheartened. And ultimately, the twists and turns of linear algebra and multivariable calculus kept me energized until I reached the final point. So, when I reflect on my five years at UMTM, the most important lessons that I've learned have nothing to do with math. Sorry, professors, not even the monk problem. But it's the skill to overcome these impossible walls. It's the ability to problem solve, fail and fail again, and then find a new solution. It's the ability to forge friendships, help each other, complement each other's strengths, and the ability to laugh at your own shortcomings, but to always keep holding on, thrilled and smiling. And who knew that the UMTM class of 2020 would get to use these skills right off the bat? A global pandemic is no match for this resilient group. We are prepared to find ways to overcome this wall and be productive to make a change in the world because it's ingrained in us to creatively problem solve and find ways to get around these walls. And so I urge you to tap into this lifelong skill that UMTM has taught us and to seize the opportunity to bring change. Before I close, I do wanna take a minute to say a huge thank you to all of the UMTM professors for being phenomenal instructors and for fostering relationships with us that go far beyond math. And quite frankly, having the patience to deal with MTM kids all year round. I also wanna say a special thank you to the MathSEP office for being prepared with materials and patiently communicating with distraught students who have either missed homeworks or found mistakes on their exam. And finally, thank you to this MTM class of 2020. We have a bond like no other, and I am honored to be part of such a phenomenal and brilliant group. So hang on tight, folks. Let's get ready to ride our next roller coaster. Thank you. My name is William Walker, and I need a haircut. I hope this message finds you all um, in a safe place, and hopefully a place that's also comfortable. Um, so let's get right to it. Umptium. It's over, which is really weird. Uh, so here we are at the end of Umptium, and it's a moment that's been five years in the making. Um, I still remember back when I took my admissions test for MTM. Um, like, I remember when the iconic Scott Gilbert himself, when he demonstrated to all of us how to, um, how to fill out a Scantron sheet. Like, he had a, he had a, <laughs> he had a PowerPoint and everything with animations. Um, but what I'll remember the most vividly about that experience is probably just how massive the lecture hall seemed. Like, it, I was honestly in awe of how big it was. It seemed like an arena, almost. And I think... That's a pretty good representation of how I originally, how I initially felt about Umptium. Um, I have an older brother, and he took Umptium before me, and I remember looking at his textbooks, um, and they looked intimidating. They were full of these huge tangles of symbols that I could not understand at all. And I, I, whenever I looked at the textbook, I was filled with this kind of mix of confusion, but also wonder. Um, and I feel like when... When we were in the middle of Umptiamp, and we're kind of in the thick of it, um, it didn't really feel like a big deal. It's just part of the routine, right? Oh, it's Wednesday. It's time to go to Umptiamp. Um, but really, when you think about it, Umptiamp is a really big deal. Like, it's a five-year-long program where you go to the University of Minnesota to take math classes. Like, that's impressive. Um, and it's something to be proud of. I mean, I guess when I was in sixth grade, that's probably something I was overly proud of. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember... Every class I went to, I had my MTF textbook in my hand. It said, Algebra for College Students. And I would, every time I'd go to sit down at a table, I'd thwack it down before I sat down. And I guess to make a big deal of how big my book was, I have no idea. Um, thankfully, I've matured somewhat since then. So, but, but, so, but still, it's undeniable that Umptiump, it is a lot. And it is something that we should be proud of. And, like, it moves, like, so quickly. Like, I remember our very first lesson was on sets, I think. Um, and then, just before we knew it, um, there we were reproducing um, these huge matrices, which was so fun. Um, and then we were doing power of a point, and then there were monks running all over the place, and then we were finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. Um, and then, all of a sudden, we were, at the end, it was we were learning about the divergence theorem. 
I mean, now that I'm talking about it, it seems like it went by really quickly, but in the moment it seemed like so much, because it is a whole lot. But honestly, long after I forget everything about TNB, about TNB frames or something, um, what I'll remember are, will, will probably be the experiences I had and the fun people I met. Like, I feel like there's some pretty universal, quintessential, um, umpty ump experiences. Like, I feel like everyone at some point must have, like, frantically done a homework assignment and turned it in right before, um, right before it was due. Um, another experience that I think everyone's had, let's, yeah, is eating the tasty pizza, um, on the review session days. Or, like, stuff like solving, when you're solving a problem, like having a super complicated and ugly expression to simplify down to something really neat and it's feeling so satisfied about it. Um, but even more than that, like, most of all, what I will miss about Umptiamp and what I'll remember about it when I look back is probably just how passionate everyone in it it was about math. Like, from what I've heard about um, math at my high school, I mean, I don't know, I haven't taken it, so I can't be certain, but what I've heard about just high school at, or math at high school, um, is that it's kind of depressing, to be honest. Like, you have the teacher, no disrespect, just, like, talking at the class, and, like, half of them's, like, completely disengaged, or not interested at all. Um, that's just in complete contrast to my experience with Umpteenth. Like, in Umpteenth, everyone's excited, everyone's talking, and it's just so lively, and I think that's a huge contributor to how passionate I am about math right now. Um, yeah, so, I mean, so, so yeah, umpteenth, umpteenth students, they're passionate about math, yeah, but aside from that, they're also, like, really interesting people. Like, honestly, umpteenth's kind of wacky. Like, every time, like, every day, pretty much, there's just weird, interesting stuff happening, and people are as cool with it. Like, I remember one time, I think, last year? I'm not sure. Um, I, before lecture, I just laid down on the floor and took a nap and no one battered an eye. Um, a different time in Calc 1, at the end of Calc 1, um, I handed out cookies and played the recorder for my class and they all loved it. It was great. Um, maybe in retrospect, I'm the wacky part of Umpty Ump, but I don't think that's really important. What I think is important is just how comfortable I was able to feel being strange in Umpty Ump. Like, I felt respected and... Surprisingly, like, despite how I was often, like, sleep-deprived and, like, super hyper and stuff, people would put up with me or even enjoy spending time with me during workshop, which was, which was really nice. Um, like, in school in general, I, I feel sort of suppressed, but, like, at Umpteenth, I felt, like, completely free. It was really fun. Um, so I'd like to thank all of my fellow Umpteenth students for helping create such a wholesome and eccentric environment. Yeah, I got, I got props. You bet. Um, and yeah, thanks to you guys, I, I could, I felt comfortable being myself and it was, that was really great. Um, also I'd like to thank all of, um, the instructors that we've all had over the years for helping share their love of math and, and being just so great at explaining stuff. Um, just being great teachers. Um, also I'd like to thank all of our parents for, you know, paying for umpteen, for driving us to class and, you know, no big deal, raising us and attending to, like, all of our needs for, like, two straight decades. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, okay, but, yeah, you graduating students, I guess that includes me, but I'm not going to congratulate myself. Congratulations, you made it. Um, the fact alone that you're here right now demonstrates just how capable and, um, how committed you all are, um, and that's just really amazing. Um, good luck. You've achieved a ton right now. You've, you've finished Umpty Ump, and I know in the future you'll achieve a lot more, so good luck with that. I'm excited to see what you guys do. Thanks to Studi and William. It's always great to hear students' perspectives on their time in Umpty Ump. Now, I get to say a few things on behalf of all of the instructors. And I already told you, we usually try and keep this event pretty light and fun because everyone's been through a grueling exam or has a whole bunch of grading in front of them. So this talk has usually had a little bit of a twist. And it would work better if we were live in a room together or at least if we had a live online event. But the world has intervened. That's not what we have. And I thought we could probably still use a little bit of levity at the end of a long semester. So I'll give you a shorter version of this talk, things that instructors have noticed about umpty-ump students 
over the years with the help of a lot of memes from some previous Umpty Ump students who have donated to this talk. All right, so let's think about what you've learned during the past few years. Well, one of the first things that comes up in algebra is, turns out there are a lot of words in mathematics that have very specific meanings and don't necessarily match what you're used to in conversational English. You've also learned it's really hard to bluff on a math exam. Hey, by the way, old joke, but it's been coming back. You may have noticed this show up on a, a shirt in Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey, you've learned how to deal with the quirks of an online homework system. This one's worth staring at for just a, a little bit and contemplating what's going on here. And I will say, this is not web work, I swear. Although we also all know web work has had its quirks over the years in umpty young classes. You've learned how to digest huge amounts of information in long lectures. And you've learned how to study for exams. Pizza, pizza, and more pizza. I, I will also say some of you have learned when to study for exams. This would be the one slide where you don't want to take any of the advice from this particular meme. Right? When you move forward, make sure to start studying a lot earlier before you get to your exam. You've also learned that as we teach you one fundamental theorem after another secretly, we've just been teaching you the same thing over and over and over. All right, so what have we noticed about umpty ump students over the years? Well, one thing is pretty clear. Umpty ump students are computationally fearless. Sometimes we need to try and slow everybody down and say, hey, this would take two pages of computations. Let's see if there's a nice clever observation we can make which would shorten everything down to half a page. And a lot of students will look at us and say, well, who cares? It's two pages of computations. I'll just go through and do that. Not only computationally fearless, computationally confident as well. And of course, very talented in mathematics. Grading an umpty ump is always a bit of an adventure. Sometimes you look at a professional problem and the solution just looks like it, it's out of left field, can't possibly be correct. And then you start to realize, hmm, maybe this is just a, a totally different approach and a really clever solution. And it means, yeah, I really do need to read the two or three pages of this solution to sort out if it's correct or not. You've listened to us about citing sources, and by Calc 3, we find students are generally really, really good at this. Although, when we first put this cartoon into this talk a few years ago, we realized we kind of needed to fix the citation that's in the middle there. So, so here's the umpty ump version of it, just for all of you. Some of you have wonderful handwriting, and your homework is just a joy to read and grade. Some people, well, okay, maybe a little less so. Uh, similarly, when you get to Calc 3, you need to draw lots of sketches of three-dimensional objects. Some people are really great at that, much better than me. And then again, there's that other end of the spectrum. By the way, I get the credit or blame for this picture. We had a contest a year or two with the instructors, uh, a year or two ago with the instructors to see who could draw the worst positively oriented sphere centered at the origin. And yeah, I, I, I won that contest. As you finish Umpty Ump, you're joining a very distinguished group of alumni, including, to nobody's surprise, a lot of mathematicians, like Marcus Keel here, who is in the first graduating class of Umpty Ump and is now a professor of mathematics in our own department. But we have lots of other people in science and engineering fields, to nobody's surprise, including medicine and neurosurgery, like Tarini here, or Teresa Wise, who went on to study math and operations research and then worked her way up through the ranks of Northwest Airlines and then Delta Airlines. We have people in mathematical finance. We have people involved in cryptocurrency. And we have more than one professional musician, which might sound surprising, except math and music are really highly related. They use the same parts of the brain. So the key here is wherever you are headed, whether that's off to college or maybe taking courses here through PSEO, or if you come back and take our advanced topics class next fall, if you haven't graduated from high school yet, Math can be a really integral part of your career, even if you don't end up majoring in math. Even if you don't end up in a mathematical career, I hear from alumni who are in law, for example. They're not computing flux integrals every day or computing surface integrals of scalar-valued functions, but they do use all of those skills that they learned in Umpty Ump, the reasoning skills, the work ethic, the ability to deal with long, complicated, open-ended problems that you heard some of our student speakers talk about. So you can take these skills that you've learned in Umpty Ump 
and apply them both directly and indirectly in wherever you end up after this. And I will say most important, please stay in touch. We always love to hear from all of our graduates, find out how things are going in college and careers and beyond, especially if you end up as an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. We have lots of alumni who work in our enrichment programs on Saturdays or work as teaching assistants for the high school level UMTM courses. Please stay in touch, stop by our office anytime and say hi. All right, I'm going to wrap up the abridged version of this talk right there. And now we're going to get to the main event, our graduation roll call. And for any graduates who are seniors this year, we've tried to include whatever their plans are for next year as well. So you'll see that on the slides coming up.
And there you have our graduating class of 2020. A huge virtual round of applause to all of you. One final bit of applause and a thank you. We've talked about how finishing Umpty Ump is a lot of work and a huge accomplishment. Chances are you've had a lot of support during that time. I say this not just as the director of Umpty Ump, but also having been an Umpty Ump parent myself. You probably have parents, guardians, family friends, or others who have spent a huge number of hours getting you to and from class and helping in countless other ways. If you're with them right now, turn, give them a, a little applause, say thank you, maybe give them a hug. If they're not with you, pick up your phone, send a message of thanks, or maybe go old school. Use the phone as a phone and actually give them a call and, and talk to them in person. All right, congratulations again to all of you. We've loved teaching you during the past two years. Can't stand the fact that we haven't been able to see you in person for months. I'll hold out hope that restrictions will be eased later on this summer and we'll be able to have some sort of in-person gathering, not a graduation, but at least a chance for all of you to see each other and see us before you head off to the next stage of your lives. And more than anything, we look forward to seeing what you accomplish in the future.